Today on Commander Replay, Aurelia is back to face Golos, Gitrog, and Freya. Find out who's coming out the other side in this removal slugfest, next on Commander Replay. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have one new Patreon supporter in Yannick Von Reed. Yannick, you are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. And, if you're looking to purchase new cards, be sure to use the TCG Affiliate Player link because it helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Welcome back everyone, playing some Aurelia the War Leader today. Today I'm trying to take another look at a more balanced version of Aurelia. For a long time I've only been playing the Angel version and the Weapons of War version. And I've been missing something that's kind of in the middle where it's a little bit equipment, but also a little bit creatures. So... Uh, this was the thing that I used to play back in the day a lot. It's nice because you can switch between modes, either having to go Voltron or having to do more of a multiple creature-based strategy, uh, depending on what kind of removal your opponents throw at you. Uh, this opening hand is uh, really interesting. Two lands, a mana vault, uh, a bunch of sweet equipments. We need a creature to really get going on the fire and ice. I think I'm going to mulligan that. There's a lot of low drop creatures in this deck. Yeah, I feel much better about this. Okay. Ramp with the Solemn Simulacrum and the Sword of the Animist. <clears throat> Goblin Engineer can come down nice and early. And uh, that should get us some nice ramp going. So yeah, I feel much, much better about this hand. Oh! We got some opponents today. We've got a Gitrog Monster. We've got a Golos. And we've got a Brea. This is going to be nasty. Scavenger Ground should be pretty good against the Gitrog monster. Uh, we're gonna go with the Flooded Strand first. Think, oh man, do we go for the Misvel Plains? Uh, I want to go for Misvel Plains, but we should really just get a Plateau to make sure that all of our mana costs are covered as we need to cast things. There's there's a lot of double red and a lot of double white in this deck. Uh, we'll go for Sacred Foundry since we don't have a turn one play. But uh, I really wanted to go for the Misvel Plains. If I were facing slower opponents, then I'd probably go for the Misfile Planes, but I really don't want to take a chance getting stuck at all. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, I've had the Angel version of Aurelia, I've had the Equipment version of Aurelia, I've been looking for something that's kind of in the middle, kind of has multiple win modes. As great as the Equipment version is, it does tend to struggle a bit against just like go wide creature decks. So I wanted a deck with a little bit more meat in the middle of the deck. Deck that can block a little bit better and uh, deal with a wider range of problems better. Here's a Mana Vault for the Brea. Yep. There's a Sculpting Steel. Also is a Mana Vault. That seems like an odd play to me. Maybe it'll make more sense later on, but for right now, not really sure what was going on with that one. Unfortunately, no Vandal Blast in this deck. It's a card that I should probably run like a bit more. Well, if I knew a Rugged Prairie was coming, I totally would have went for the Misfail Plains, but I'm going to hold the Scavenger Grounds for one more turn because of... just so the Gitrog Monster doesn't see it yet. Hopefully there's no wheels out of Brea. Uh, but that is going to mean... Goblin Engineer time. Use the ability. Oh, is there no Winter Orb in this deck? Oh, that was the one that I was really hoping on. Crap. Well, that being the case, I might just put, like, a Thran... Uh, no, we can only get a card that's three Convert a Mana Cost back. So, uh, that being the case, I might just put a Worn Power Stone in there, and then, like, when we play the Psalm Simulacrum, we can sacrifice the Psalm Simulacrum and get the Worn Power Stone, and that'll give us a lot of mana. Oh, uh, I wish I put Winter Orb in this deck. Winter Orb is so good at shutting down, uh, these combo-type decks. Opponent's gonna sacrifice a land, a gain two life. Play a Harvest Worm. Gets a land back. I don't know how... yeah, I don't know about that one. So as I mentioned, first up, Chaotix2075 piloting the Gitrog monster. Uh, he said it's not a CEDH list, so, you know, there are some very strong Gitrog monsters. Uh, and having faced CEDH builds of the Gitrog monster, it's really, really difficult to interact with that deck. Interacting with Dredge is just super hard, and a lot of them will run, like, Rift Sweeper and things like that to get stuff back out of Exile, so, like, Tormod's Crypt doesn't even save you. Just super, super nasty. Again, he's not playing specifically that version, but I assume it's still very strong. Uh, next up, we have Champion Athun piloting Golos Tireless Pilgrim. Yep. Uh, Golos pretty much everywhere these days. Standard, Commander, doesn't matter. Making everyone's life miserable. Uh, and then finally, Rogaku piloting Brea. Ooh, Brea. A lot of bad memories about this one. I mean, for it felt like for a year and a half, all people were playing was Brea decks, and... It takes about three different pieces or so to assemble infinite Brea combos, so yeah. Again, I don't believe this is a CDH build, so I don't think we're going to see like Lion's Eye Diamond or anything like that, but... There's a Chaos Warp. I'm sure that will come in handy at some point. Let's lay down the Scavenger Grounds. 
I'm going to play the Fire and Ice, uh, because the one I really want to keep alive is the Sword of the Animist right now. Uh, I'm going to keep the blocker up just so the worm doesn't come our way. I mean, it may still, but at least the token won't, so... I'd rather let the Gitrog do the early chip damage than us getting in for one. <laughs> it's not really worth it. Especially if opponents are going to send way more damage back our way, or at least have the opportunity to do so. So if the sword doesn't get shot right here, we have an interesting choice between Sword of the Animist and Fire and Ice. May actually go for the... Ah, he's going to send it our way. Well, that didn't work. Well, the 1-1's one -one's going the other way. Uh, now there's a Lotus Cobra, so that means we probably need to go... Fire and Ice, shoot Lotus Cobra. We go down to 36. Here's a Mystical Tutor for the Golos. Seems bad. Opponent goes for a Farseek. All right, well, that's about the safest Mystical Tutor I've ever seen. There's a Farseek. Yep. So this would be a game where you want Sword of Sinew and Steel, and uh, unfortunately, it's just not in this deck. I never seem to pack Mass Artifact Hate. I mean, I guess uh, this deck has Hour of Revelation and Austere Command, so I mean, I guess that's our Mass Artifact Hate. But... I never seem to run Vandal Blast, and I've been trying to convince myself to run Sinew and Steel more, but it just gets so crowded. Like, Sinew and Steel, I found that it's just not consistently better than Fire and Ice and Feast and Famine. Uh, and also when you're talking Boros, you've got Sunforger. That's a lot of three-drop equipments that are, you know, all fairly expensive to cast and equip, so it's just like, uh, you know. Really want it, but never seems to make it. Here comes a Nekusar. Well, that's interesting. Opponent's going to give us card draw. I'm all about that. Uh, probably means... Probably means like it's a Brea Wheels deck, honestly. So we draw an extra card. It's the Miss Vale Plains, and Nekusar will trigger twice. That's a Mana Crypt. We're going to be able to do some stuff. Okay. Okay, so I think we can go Mana Crypt, equip the sword, shoot the Lotus Cobra, Chaos Warp on the Nekusar. That should work. Yeah, that will work. Okay, so Mana Crypt, equip the sword. We've got the three mana we need. We'll play the Miss Vale tapped. Seems like a good time. Opponent's got that Forbidden Orchard up, which is actually a blocker, which is super annoying. Hopefully they don't mess us up right here. Okay, opponent opponent did not make the token. Excellent. Do I want opponents to have that additional card draw? I don't think I do, actually. I was thinking about the damage versus the card draw, and the card draw seems much worse. So, Sword of Fire and Ice Trigger, shoot the Lotus Cobra. We draw an Elish Norn. That's going to be a good one. Then, then Chaos Warp on the Nekusar. Opponent gets a land. No big deal. Opponent's low on cards, so I assume they were really looking for that uh, card draw right there. Yeah, Mana Crypt is a really good card, because we would have only been able to do one of those things if uh, Crypt did not show up. I'm only going to send the Worm back our way, and the Spirit over to the Rhea, sure. We go down to 30. Also, I should point out, someone was asking me in the comments the other day, uh, they wanted to build an Aurelia deck for their son, uh, and more specifically, they asked their son which deck they wanted to play, and uh, they said they would build it for him, and they said Aurelia the War Leader. So they messaged me asking me uh, if I had an Aurelia deck that would be good for them. They said that there are some fairly strong decks running around their meta, so the Angel deck isn't always up to that. The Angel deck can be a little bit slow. It goes late really, really well, but it's not particularly fast. If uh, you're talking like a turn 7 meta, you're going to have to hope someone else has removal to stop someone else from winning. So I wanted to build an Aurelia deck that was faster but more resilient than the equipment deck. Because the equipment deck, like I said, it's been struggling if people just pile creatures on board and it just gets attacked a lot. So I really wanted to strike that balance of being fast but also having some resilience. And uh, that's what we're trying to do today. And I've been thinking about this deck for like a year. I've been wanting to put it back together. So uh, that's what we're doing. And opponent does a whole bunch of things while I was talking. Lays down a Dockside Extortionist, gets a ton of mana, uses that to cast the Golos, gets a land, looks like the Ancient Tomb, and then lays down a Bloom Tender. Our turn is probably going to be Elish Norn because there's a lot of things we want to clear off the board right here. We'll see what Brea's got. Actually, the Engineer can't be targeted by Brea. That's huge. That is huge. Here comes Brea. Yep. And right now, the Boros deck has more cards in hand than the Green Black, the Five Color, and the Four Color decks. <laughs> Oh, Fire Nice. Also shooting the Nekusar. Nekus Nekusar got us an extra card in there, too. Oh, opponent's going to strip mine our Mistvale Plains. That's going to keep us off of Elish Norn. Ooh, need another Mana Rock off the top. Let's go, Heads. Lost the flip. That's a Jit. Uh, Jit can do things. Those are blue, correct? Those are blue. So, play the Mountain. We have exactly six mana. We could go for Aurelia. Aurelia gets us two Sword Triggers. Uh, also gets us a lot of damage. We could go for a Jit. Jit would give us the ability to... Man, we need to get Sword of the Animus going at some point, too. Just uh, losing that land really hurt. 
was also hoping to get rid of the Golos, but uh, yeah, I think Golos is probably going to stick. We should probably get rid of the Bloom Tender. Uh, Bloom Tender can make absurd amounts of mana. think we're going for Aurelia right here. Draw two cards and shoot some things it seems like the best play. Also, these are both Mana Vaults, so Brea won't be coming back for a while. Do we have enough colored mana for Aurelia? I don't know if we do. We do not. Hmm. We have only three colored mana. Scavenger Ground's hurting us a bit right here. Uh, so I think that's going to put us on the JIT plan. Get Umazawas. Get Sword of the Animus. Go to combat. Swing into the Brea. Uh, let's... Sword on the Bloom Tender. And we'll wait on the JIT triggers. Probably shoot the Thopters before they untap. We draw land. Lands are good. Uh, that is a land that produces white. Or will find us one that produces white, so that'll be very helpful. And I think we pass the turn like that. Probably gonna have to dodge a bullet from Golos right here. Uh, maybe not. One, two, three, four. They have four colors of mana. They would need to find their fifth color of mana, but if they do, then they can activate. And that's always scary. That's gonna be a real roll of the dice. There's a damnation. Uh, I'm fine with that. That That's just fine. Chaotic said he should have attacked me there. Yep, I was wide open. Problem now is one, two, three, four, five, six. One more mana, and opponent can recast Golos, and then they can find the colored mana that they need, but hopefully they're out of lands. They haven't played one yet. Uh, there's a Teamer Sabertooth. That card's annoying. We could play Elish Norn and then shoot the Teamer Sabertooth before uh, problems ensue. I think we can wait one turn on the Elish Norn. Uh, we really need to get the Psalm Simulacrum going. Uh, we could also get uh, Aurelia for seven. I think... Depending on what we draw right now, I think our best bet is Solemn Simulacrum. One's going to eat two Mana Vault triggers. Down to 24. Nice. Brings it back to our turn. Mana Crypt flip on us. Let's go, Tails. Lost the flip. There's a Plateau. That's the one I was planning on searching for. Play the Plateau. We have seven mana total, which uh, isn't enough to get Aurelia in and equipped, so I think it's going to be the Solemn Simulacrum. Check the graveyards real quick. Nothing crazy in the graveyard, so I don't think we're going to have to scavenger grounds anything this turn. Get Solemn Simulacrum. Get a Plains. Start equipment stuff. Uh, we can equip one thing. They all cost two. I'm going to go for the Fire and Ice because... Yeah, I'm going to go for the Fire and Ice. The protection from two colors and the fact that it makes it a 4-4 seems really good, given what's going on on board right now. So I like that. Yeah, we'll pass a turn like that. Leave a mana open. Make opponents think we've got a swords sitting around, which we do not at this moment. Here comes Get Rock Monster. Yup, that's a Zurin Orb that's in play. Ooh. That's a Field of the Dead. Well, Elish Norn going to be good against the Field of the Dead. Oh, that's Mirari's Wake. That's scary. That is super, super scary. A lot of threats on board. A lot of things that need to be answered. We are running out of answers. Oh, and it gives plus one, plus one? Ugh. Feast and Famine off the top would be super, super sweet. That's kind of what I'm looking on right here. Uh, we need to get some double mana going. We need to, If we can go Elish Norn into multiple plays, life will get crazy. Here comes Brea back to play. Yep. Brings it back to our turn. Mana Crypt Flip. See what we draw. Tutor or Feast and Famine would be ridiculous. Tails? Won the flip. It's a land. Nah, what I was looking for. Play the... Miss Fail Plains got shot. Okay, Miss Fail Plains is down. Uh, play the Arid Mesa. Crack the Arid Mesa. Get a Plains. I've been thinking of this over for a while between the Elish Norn. If we... I really want to get rid of all of our opponent's creatures. That's the thing that I want to do. Elish Norn gets us well on our way, but I think one of them will survive, and I'm not in a place where I really want any of them to survive. Uh, if we go Aurelia, we'll get two sword triggers. Eh, maybe Norn is the right one. I think we can blow up more things with Norn, because Norn will take care of the Thopters. We can use the Jit to kill the Sabertooth. Use the... Fire and Ice to take down the Brea, and that leaves just the Gitrog. And also, it, uh, well, opponent doesn't have the condition for Field of the Dead met yet. Hmm. Hmm. Opponents have two cards in hand each. I don't think any of it's removal. I'm going for Elish Norn. Because if Elish Norn sticks right here, and then we go Aurelia next turn, it's probably game or very close to it. Elish Norn into play. Everything getting much, much smaller. Uh, equip the Jit. Shoot the Sabertooth. Shoot the Sabertooth. I think we need to get going on the uh, Golos player right here. So swing into them. They take a hit for six. Sword of Fire and Ice will trigger. Shoot Brea. Brea down. We draw oh, another land. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Looking for some gas. Don't really want to reforge the soul with opponents being low on cards. 
Um, so I think next turn we're probably on the Aurelia plan. Uh, sadly, we're just a little bit short of shooting the Gitrog monster, so Gitrog is going to get a turn to uh, try and do some stuff here. Opponent's got a sack of land at the beginning of their upkeep. Yep. Sacrifices a forest. Here comes a Corsair of Crufix. Yep. Top card of their library is a Signet. Opponent plays a land, gains a life, and we'll stop right there. Get Rog our way. It does have Death Touch, so we're just going to go ahead and take that. I think if this deck maybe needs a Thaumatic Compass, because if we could flip that over... Sometimes you go so hard being aggro with this deck that people can backswing at you pretty hard, and uh, I think a Thaumatic Compass would actually be pretty helpful against that. Toxic... Wow! Toxic Deluge X11. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, Solemn Simulacrum will die. We get to draw a card. So Solemn Simulacrum could have become, what, like a 10-10? Uh, so they were trying to ac account for that. There's a Volcanic Offering. That's a good card. Actually, no one has any creatures yet, though, so, meh. Uh, but this turn we're gonna be on 10 mana, and that's Aurelia plus 2 equipments, and that seems good. Oh, I knew it! Merciless Eviction on all artifacts. Gain some life. Yep, that's gonna get us the worst. We lose a lot. May need to think about the Reforge of the Soul now. Opponent's gonna make a Spirit. Those don't have flying, by the way. Golos into play, yep. Definitely need to keep Golos from untapping. We've got the Volcanic Offering, uh, but that means we can't get Aurelia going. Lost three pretty good equipments right there. I really wish we got the Sword of the Animus going at some point, but we had to keep shooting stuff with the Fire and Ice. Uh, a Karma Guide off the top for Elish Norn would be pretty cool, although I don't know if that actually solves anything. Oh, I wish Winter Orb was in the deck, because if we could Karma Guide, Goblin Engineer, get the Winter Orb, that's where we really want to be at this point. That's a Goblin Welder. Uh, we have no artifacts in play currently. Play a Plains. Play Goblin Welder. I think I'm going to sit on Volcanic Offering. Comes a Signet for the Gitrog opponent. Uh, end step, Volcanic Offering time. Uh, I'm going to start by blowing up this. I think I'm going to go with the Urborg. Let Chaotix pick a land. He chooses the Thespian Stage. I was hoping to get two lands from the Golos player. Hit the Golos... And that'll hit the spirit, so Golo's down. Golo's back to play, yep. Ooh, he's gonna strip mine our scavenger grounds. That's two lands gone for us. <sighs> Opponent gets their field of the dead, yep. <laughs> Says Dos Golos. Uh, there's a maze of it. That is terrible against what we're trying to do. Love to see a smothering tithe off the top. Well, even if we did, uh, we won't have the mana for it to go reforge in the same turn. Makes me sad. That's a return to dust. Uh, that's actually really helpful. That's incredibly helpful. How much mana do we have? We have three, four, five, six, seven. This will be eight mana. Play the Marsh Flats. Crack the Marsh Flats. Get a Plains. Return to dust on Golos and Marari's Wake. And this should really slow down the Golos threat for a while. Opponent's going to Congregation at Dawn. Well, we can attack with this Goblin Welder. I don't know how much that's going to do, but uh, opponent does have a single zombie. They reveal a Birds of Paradise, a Zakama, and a Notion Th Oh, Notion Thief! We can't reforge the soul. Oh, that's a Tireless Tracker. Yep, that's a that's a real magic card, especially this late in the game in a lands deck. Whew. Uh, now, I'm trying to think about what the order of cards that opponent will draw is. If they don't play one, then it was the Notion Thief. Oh, I think it was the Notion Thief. Opponent's going to send the zombie our way. Yep. I was asking if anyone has anything for the Notion Thief. Opponent said, me asking about it means I've got something, so they said it's a good sign. Yep. We've got to reforge the soul that we now can't play. Sunforger off the top it would be pretty sweet. It's another land! Ugh! Play land. We have only drawn lands. Two planes left in the deck. Get our commander. Yeah, we'll swing with the Goblin Welder as well. If they want to trade Notion Thief into the Goblin Welder, I'm fine with that. Goblin Welder's not doing anything at this moment. Opponent takes a hit, goes down to 22. I'm going to leave the Goblin Welder up just in case some random mill happens or something. I don't know. I don't know what would happen that would give us uh, something to do with the Goblin Welder, but just, you know, the one damage doesn't seem especially relevant. And being able to block the damage from the Tireless Tracker seems decent. Here comes an Investigate Trigger for Tireless Tracker. And here comes the Notion Thief. Yup. Zakama's going to be a real problem also. Ah, uh, no attacks. He should have attacked right there. Here comes the Birds of Paradise. I think that means no Zakama this turn. Toxic Deluge X4. All right, all right. Uh, Notion Thief down. 
Zakama is going to be the next problem that we have to deal with. Uh, actually, we can reforge the Zakama out of their hand. Okay, I like that. This one's going to desert a temple on a swamp. I don't know if that does anything. Oh, if they, unless they specifically need black mana. Okay, I see where they're going. Here comes Whispering Madness. Yep, that's going to hurt. Discard the Reforge of Soul, draw the Feast and Famine. Zakama into the graveyard. There's a... Oh, that's a Mask of Memory. How much is Aurelia? Aurelia is 8, so... Let's just go for Aurelia right here. Keep the damage on. Problem is now the uh, Maze of Ith. If we try to Mask and Sword next turn, they probably Maze Aurelia. A strip Mine off the top would be helpful. Opponent down to 13. 12 Commander. Here comes Soul Ring for the Gitrog. Uh, I think that might put him back on Gitrog mana. Gitrog back to play. Yep. Here comes a land and a field of the dead trigger. Yep. Oh, I think opponent's on a big spell right here. It's not good. It's not good. Doesn't look like time stretch. Uh, could be that other one, though. See only single blue mana. It's good news. Okay, just recasting Golos. Okay. Oh, that's a glacial chasm. Oh. Crap. They're at 11 life, so, I mean, they can't hide behind it forever, but, you know, even one or two Golos activations will be bad. Oh, Molten Psyche. Losing our good cards right here. The wheels. Oh, uh, we draw Stoneforge Mystic Duelist Heritage. Okay. Okay. And a Temple Bell for our opponent. Each player draws a card. Temple Bell. Feast and Famine comes back. Sweet. Oh, Molten Psyche must be a shuffle. Yep. Do we have Hexproof in this deck anywhere? Uh, there are Swiftfoot Boots. But I think we're probably on Sunforger. That's a Plains. Play the Plains. Duelist Heritage... How much mana do we have? That's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, I think that's exactly enough for Stoneforge, Sunforger, leave up an activation. Yep, we've got a plan. Cast Stoneforge Mystic. Opponent floats a blue and a black mana. I don't know what that's all about. Stoneforge Mist. Uh oh. We could just go Helm of the Host, right? We need we need Sunforger uh, to get rid of the Glacial Chasm. Cast Sunforger. Hope this doesn't get countered. Put it on Aurelia. Swing into the Gitrog Monster. Only open attack we've got. <laughs> Opponent says, what are you willing to do to make it seven? I uh, got some deals going over there. <laughs> uh, second attack back into the Gitrog. And opponent's going to maze this one. they uh working out a little bit of a deal. So Gitrog will get an upkeep trigger right here. They sacrifice a land. Oh, that's an Obnixilus to Fallen. Uh, everyone's life total is pretty low. <laughs> Three damage, especially if there's multiples. Three our way, yep. Uh, do we just... No, I don't think we should Teferi's yet. All right, now we Teferi's. Uh, or... Yeah, we should just Teferi's right here. We don't know what a Golos has. Cast Teferi's Protection. Cumulative Upkeep on the Glacial Chasm, yep. Goes down to nine. Opponent plays a land, Field of the Dead does its thing. Nothing can attack, though. Cracks of Wooded Foothills, down to eight. More Field of the Dead. Oh, right now we need to blow up two lands, which is super annoying. Uh, opponent going for something right here. Uh, Golos activation, probably. Yep, here comes the Golos activation. What do they hit? Cyclonic Rift? Well, yep, that's why we did that. Azusa and Arbor Elf. Uh, I guess they can't overload the Rift, so there's that. But here comes the Elf, the Azusa. Opponent's got another Strip Mine in play. We need our Strip Mine pretty badly. Volcanic Offering's already down, which makes me sad. Ugh. Got more lands we need to blow up. Once it activate the Temple Bell, we draw... Ooh. <laughs> That's an aggravated assault. Maze of it's still a problem, though. Opponent going to cast a Prince of Thals. Whenever a permanent an opponent controls put into a graveyard, put that card onto the battlefield under your control unless they pay three life. Nice. But I think it's about time for Feast and Famine and Aggravated Assault. We need to... What do we need to get rid of? Uh, we need to get rid of Maze of Ith first. That's the one that'll stop the whole thing. That's a Sulfurous Blast. That's a card that has been on my mind with all these zombies running around, but I don't think we're going to need it. Equip Sunforger. Activate Sunforger. Generous Gift on Maze of Ith. Ooh, Chaos Warp is already down. Hmm. Opponent gets an Elephant. Activate Stoneforge Mystic. Get a Feast and Famine. Equip a Feast and Famine. Attack Rogaku. Get an Aurelia Trigger. Did opponent get it? Ha, ah, the Elephant's green. The Elephant's supposed to be white. <laughs> Token issue right there. Opponent takes the Aurelia hit. There's the Feast and Famine. Untap all the lands. Opponent's going to shoot our Sacred Foundry. That's fine. Uh, it didn't give us the option to pay three life. That's weird. Our lands untap. 
we go back to combat. Do it again. Feast and Famine triggers. They discard their last card. They discarded their Grand Abolisher the first time. Uh, they'll probably die to the Sulfurous Blasts, so... Next, play Aggravated Assault. Activate the Aggravated Assault. I don't know if we can actually get Sunforger re-equipped at any point. This is going to be kind of awkward. Attack Chaotix. They get hit with Feast and Famine. Oh, no, we're okay. Okay. So, activate Aggravated Assault. Equip Sunforger. Brea scoops it. Sword of Feast and Famine triggers. Chaotix dies. We don't have enough to activate right here. Okay. Our lands untap. Take a look at our deck list. I don't think we have anything left to deal with the uh, Glacial Chasm this turn. Not seeing anything, but we can do. We can activate Sunforger. We can Wear Tear on Golos. Wear on Golos. Then we can Sulfurous Blast. Get rid of all their stuff. And now we should just be able to wait them out with the Glacial Chasm. They can't hide behind it forever. Glacial Chasm. If they want to keep it, it's going to be half their life. They do. Down to four. Another Field of the Dead trigger. Opponent cracks a fetch. Down to three. Another Field of the Dead trigger. Oh, opponent's going to Teferi's Protect. Well, they still have to let the Glacial Chasm go on their turn. And we can just Sunforge our stuff uh, as we need to. Play the Duelist Heritage. Pass the turn. Opponent lets the Glacial Chasm go. Yep, Field of the Dead. And they scoop it right there. Nice. Ooh, Hero Blade Hold next. Sweet. Yeah, that was a match. Good opponents right there. We kept them all under control, kept their commanders out of play. Uh, and they weren't able to get much going. A lot of removal in that game. Uh, we really had to grind. Um, like I said, probably need to add a Thaumatic Compass uh, right here just to kind of prevent the attacks from coming in. True Conviction is another one I've been thinking about. When you give Aurelia Double Strike and Life Link, you uh, gain a lot of life back, which is really, really helpful. Um, so that's something I've been thinking about as well. But, you know, doing any of that means something else has to come out, which is always the scary part. So, you know, maybe get rid of a Balan. Balan is okay. Like, it's decent. You can definitely do some stuff with Sunforger. Uh... It's helpful for some of the other equipments, but this isn't a full equipment build, so maybe Balan can come out. On the same hand, maybe Kazool can come out, but you can hit Kazool turn three and then into turn four sword and get it equipped. It's pretty sweet. Uh, we never had the chance to get that Sword of the Animist equipped, which uh, put us a little bit behind of where we could have been, but we also had to keep blowing up our opponent's stuff. So yeah, really good fight right there. Uh, a lot of stuff. I was getting really nervous about the Golos going off a few times. Uh, we got the Brea. We kind of priced their commander out of the game. They couldn't really uh, cast it again, which was good. Gitrog, same sort of stuff. Didn't ramp probably the way they wanted to, and that slowed them down quite a bit. Uh, so, yeah, really good game. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching.